Hi all, thanks for tuning into this latest video. Uh, it's been a little while since I've, I've done a face-to-face -face video. Is that what you call them? I don't know. Um, because I don't like the look of my face, to be honest, but there you go. So this one is around the under 2.5 goals markets and how you can trade or bet successfully on those markets. This is something that I've been doing for a number of years. It's one of my favourite uh, markets to, to trade normally, um, but you can also do straight bets on it. Um, and it's something that I've had quite a lot of success on. Uh, it's it's something that not a lot of people want to bet on because it's a bit of a dull market. You, you're actually hoping for a nil-nil. You're hoping to see a boring, non-exciting game between two evenly matched teams, slugging it out and not really having much creativity. So for the average football fan, certainly a neutral watching a football match, it's not really what you want to bet on. And a lot of punters will be uh, betting on games that they watch because they want a bit of further interest. And, you know, normally, as with the draws, people... Um, don't really want to bet on draws because they want to back a team so they can get behind them and actually sort of have a bit of involvement in the in the game. And it's the same with the goals market. They want to see goals flying in. They want to back somebody to score. They want to see their flair players playing well. Um, and I like to, as we've discussed before, take the uh, opposite view to a lot of the markets because um, that's where I can find value. So under 2.5 goals is one of those. Um, there's the the average goals you'll see banded around lots of different things. It depends what leagues you look at, obviously. But two and a half goals is around average um, for the amount of goals that will be scored in a game. Often that's calculated looking at uh, very roughly again, sort of one goal in the first half, two goals in the second half. Um, so if it's it, it's an average, it's sort of you know the majority of games just about of two and a half goals. So that means there's a hell of a lot of games that don't realise two and a half goals. And there's also a hell of a lot of goal at games, a real load of games that are nil-nil at half time, for example. And they're the ones that really we want to be tapping into. Um, we don't necessarily, if we're trading, which I'm going to show you in the live video in a minute, um, we don't really care what the final score is as long as we've had a long enough period in the first half where the goals haven't come. We don't care if they score six in the second half because we should be out of our trade by then. If it's a straight bet, it's slightly different and you're going to have to look at different parameters and you're going to have to look at different variables when selecting your matches. A lot of the time for my trading, I will look at games where both teams might start slowly, uh, take a bit of time to figure out their opponents, where teams will have impact substitutes that will come off the bench and affect a game in the second half which will skew the amount of goals they score. So they might score a lot of goals in a game, but a lot of them are in the second half. And that's fine for me because the odds will reflect that goals are scored. So in the two and a half, you might get good odds for that. But I know that those goals are going to come late on or are likely to come late on. So that's a game that will flag up for me. Um, so yeah, I, I just want to go through a live example on Betfair of trading the under two and a half goals. Um, I won't actually be uh, trading in and out necessarily, but I'll show you at what point you might want to get in and out. Um, if you've got odds of over evens, so two point whatever, um, I'd always suggest laying some of your um, liability as you go along. Um, it's a method that I've been using for quite a long time on, on Betfair. So I, if I was, for example, in a trade for under two and a half goals, 2.20, at kickoff, I'm backing 2.20 at kickoff, 100 pound. Uh, I then want to reduce my liability at certain points. I'd usually do 0 0.20 um, below the the price that I was offered. So if it's 2.2, I'll then lay. Um, so if I put 40 pound on, I'll lay. Uh, so if I put 100 pound on, I'll lay 25 pound at 2.0. Um, then I'll lay another 25 pound at 1.80 another 25 at 1.6 and you see how I'm going with that and so that means eventually you'll break even and you'll have um, a free bet basically on the unders um, and then you can choose whether to equalize that and cash out and have level profit whether it's two or over over two and a half or under two and a half or you can have that free bet uh, that's something that I would do but you, you need to have decent odds for that you need to have uh, better than evens odds because otherwise the market moves too slowly and you're in the you're in the game for too long. You're in the trade for too long. Uh, in a lot, in the example that I'll show you now, um, I only got on it just over one point. I think it's one point six. Um, and for the odds to move sufficiently for you to get out of that trade by laying off increments, you're going to be in the game until half time, maybe even after half time. So 
that's not what you, you don't want to do that in fact it would be over half time it's it's too small a stat uh the, the odds are too low for that to work but that's something that you should consider if you've got odds of over two and that's a slightly different um criteria uh, a different selection criteria for your games to find the game that's very much your games where teams are expected to score goals but the goals aren't expected to come early this example that i'm showing you now um the teams aren't expected to score goals. Um, so it's not a case of, oh, the goals are going to come late. The, the teams aren't really expected to score goals. Um, so it's a bit of a gimme, really. I'm hoping that it will sort of give a good example of, of, of the strategy. But as I say, I won't be trading in and out and laying uh, my liability because it'll just it's just not equitable. It's, it's not worth being in the trade for that long. Um, so in this one, I'll be, I'll be looking at setting a profit that I'll be happy with before I start the trade and cashing out for when that profit is realised. Often that'll be 50%, I'll say, of the profit that could be realised. Um, so in this next example, I'm only betting £10, so I think I could get five, just over five back, because they had to just over 1.5. So I'll say if I can get 250, I'll come out of that trade and then move on to the next one. You can set that limit at whatever you want, um, but it's worth having your exit strategy before you start. Don't just enter a trade and then on the hoof go, oh, well, you know, I, I might stay in for a bit more or I don't know where to come out now, should I come out? You want to be looking at the stats ideally. If it's a really lively game, get out. Um, you don't want to stay in a game that's end-to-end -end and isn't performing, isn't behaving in the way that you expected it to behave. So if you selected that game because you expected it to have only a few shots on target, not very many, not very many corners, cagey, and then all of a sudden it's end-to-end -end like a basketball game, get out because that's not the trade that you wanted to enter. And it looks like goals are going to come. And even if the goals don't come, the price won't drop quick enough because people will be expecting goals and the market to reflect that. So your Betfair graph will stagnate and it won't be dropping. And you want to benefit from time decay. You want to benefit as time goes on, no goals, the odds drop. And if they're not dropping quick enough, you're going to be in the trade too long and you're risking losing your full stake. So bear that in mind. Um, but before... Before I bore the pants off you anymore, let's have a look at the live trade example and I'll come back to you after. So we're going to have a look at a Stoke versus Preston game here for the under 2.5 goals market. If we look at the graph, we can see that it's been steadily dropping. It started off at just above 1.7 and it's come down now in price. The latest price match is 1.56. So... It's not a massive price. It's not something that we'd be able to trade in and out of massively, um, like a, with a match above twos, but uh, above even. So if we look at it at the moment, three minutes gone, we're already in a small profit. Um, so we'll wait and see how it goes from here, and I'll keep you updated. So if we check back in at 12 minutes, we can see that the cash out's actually gone to a pound now already from our initial five. Um, and look at the graph, it's still continuing to go down nicely, which is what we want to see, a steady decrease uh, in the price, allowing us to benefit from the time decay. And the current price trading is 1.42. So, yep, it looks promising so far. We're going to leave it in a little bit. We look at the match summary, not much going on at all. Uh, the shots on target uh, are zero at the moment and only one shot overall. Sometimes the Betfair um, stats aren't that accurate, I must say. Um, I much prefer looking at the Bet365 um, stats or sofa score, but yeah, as you can see, we're doing okay, and we'll, we'll stay in the market for a little bit longer and see where we get to. So on the 26th minute now, and we can see that we've got a profit of £1.65, still no shots on target, um, and yeah, we, we're, we're starting to realise quite a nice profit. You can see here, though, there was a shot on target um, or a close close miss not long ago because I was watching the game and you can see how it's just levelled off. The graph has just levelled off, started to plateau a little bit and that's because there was some attacking play and it might make people, well it does make people, um, bet on the overs a bit more. So that's something to be aware of, that it won't keep falling regardless of what's going on in the match. Um, so 37th minute now and we can see that we've got £2.78 profit there at the moment. Um, which is sort of 50% of, of the profit on offer, which is a good mark that I always look for. And you can see after that little plateau, nothing's happened since, and we've gone all the way back down again here. So this is really a, a healthy looking graph for what we're trying to do. 1.21, the odds on the under 2.5 goals now. Um, and this is the sort of place where I'd be looking to get out, to tell the truth. Um, 
you don't want that first goal to go in and I'd be looking to get out here and take a profit. I'd be happy that I've realised 50%. And if we skip forward to half time, we can see that it did remain nil nil till half time. £3.46 profit, uh, trading at 1.15 now. So, you know, a really, a really good outcome for us. Um, still no shots on target according to Betfair, but Bet365 has got one shot on target. So, as I say, it might be worth fact checking there. But this is the sort of game that we'd be looking at. It's a perfect outcome for the first half. Um, and like I said, I would have been out the trade by now, but I'm going to let it carry on to show you what happens a little bit further on if we'd have stayed in. So there you go, you can see the, the graph, it's plateaued at half time down there, um, but it's, it's steadily come down since kickoff, apart from the odd blip, and it's trading at 1.16, so uh, yeah, perfect example really of what we're looking for, um, and after half time we'll, we'll see what goes on, and here we are, 46th minute, I say after half time, exactly after half time, and the first goal has gone into Stoke on the 46th minute. It still leaves us in profit, so it's a good time to get out if you are still in. Um, admittedly, you're not going to make any money, but you're certainly not going to lose any, and you don't want to be in the market after the first goal, ideally, because once the second goes in, you really are dusted. And look, you can see what a massive effect it has on the price. A massive increase to the, to the odds offered now. Uh, starting to come straight back down afterwards to be fair so you always want to wait a, a few seconds after the the goal's gone in but it's currently trading at 1.51 which is similar position to where we got in at the start so that's the impact that one goal can have on these matches so that's worth knowing and worth keeping an eye out for um, so yeah if you're still in at this point i'd definitely recommend getting out rather than waiting and hoping to claw back some profit you're, you're in the green um you're basically breaking even, and I think it's best to move on to another trade. But I'll leave uh, the trade in just to show you what's going on um, and what happens when that second goal does come, if it does come. <laughs> and there it is, 59th minute, an equaliser for Preston. 1-1, one, one, and the under two and a half goals market now is reacting. And you can see that we'd actually be losing money on our trade now um, if we cashed out. If you were still in, I'd still recommend cashing out, but... That's up to you. And as you can see, there's the first price increase of the first goal. Started to come back down. Second goal, huge increase in the graph showing that the odds on under two and a half goals have massively gone up. Um, and they're trading at 2.58 now. So that's way above what we got on it. So it's not a market we want to be part of at the moment. Um, and yeah, that's that's so the end of that. Really. Trade there. Um, a good selection, first half. Very little incident, uh, very few shots on target, not much attacking intent as we predicted um, before the game. Don't get me wrong, the odds reflected that we weren't going to get a lot of goals, so it's not sort of rocket science, but um, my selections are made on the data and the odds are then looked at afterwards, so it had nothing to do with the odds, um, the way the game was picked, but it obviously shows that the selection was sound because the odds were quite low for under 2.5 goals. And it performed how we wanted it to in the first half. We got in and out, um, or we didn't, but we could have got in and out if it wasn't um, for the video. Um, so yeah, with the 50% the profit was recognised after about um, 30 minutes, I think. Um, the game actually ended up 2-1, or 1-2. So it went to 1-1, to one, one, as you saw in the video, and then Preston actually got a fairly late winner. So that just shows why you want to get in and out of these games, because even though it looks like there's going to be no goals, you actually ended up with three. Um, so if you'd have let it run, you'd have lost the trade or bet. Um, but by getting in and out, as I mentioned in in the uh, earlier example, you can secure some pretty regular profits. Regular small profits is what you'll get with this strategy, um, and that's not to be sniffed at. You know, um, in my draw strategy, the odds are longer, but the wins aren't as frequent. So having this alongside it to sort of um, negate some of the losses and some of the streaks is a really good idea because you want to um, diversify your portfolio as much as possible um, and we'll show a bit more of that with the under um, 2.5 goals market a bit more in future and also the corners betting market which is another one of my favourites um, so yeah uh, I hope you enjoy the video the under 2.5 goals selections and future corner betting selections are now included in the MBM strategy that you can sign up to on the website at www.themathbetman.com 
Um, so it used to be just drawers that I sent out to the subscribers, um, but I've decided to chuck in the under two and a half in the corners, basically, because it's something that I'd been working on. Uh, I didn't want to add it for an extra fee. Um, yeah, yeah, if I'm betting on it myself and I'm doing the work, I might as well share it with the people who've supported me. So if you do sign up for a subscription, you'll get all those, um, you'll get three times the selections, basically. Instead of just drawers, you'll get under two and a halves and corners. Um, whether you do or don't, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please like and subscribe, help me out a lot. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you again soon. Cheers.